So in this video, we're going to look at how to differentiate between the SN2 and E2 reactions. So the substitution and elimination reactions. Okay, so let's look at the extreme cases. Say we have uh, a strong nucleophile, but a weak base. In order to have a sufficient energy for an E2 reaction, we need a strong base. And so in, those, in that case, the SN2 reaction will be favored. Similarly, if we have a strong base that's a weak nucleophile, then the SN2 reaction just isn't possible. The activation energy would be too high. And so that reaction would proceed by an elimination or E2 reaction. Okay, so what happens in this situation where the, the, the species colliding with the electrophile is both a strong base and a strong nucleophile. So what chemists have determined experimentally is that now the structure of the electrophile becomes really important. So we're going to take a look at this uh, program called MolView. This one you can play with if you want. It's, it's openly accessible on the web. And we're going to see that the difference. So the two possible reactions then are whether or not that, that species, that base slash nucleophile, collides with a proton on the beta carbon to give an elimination reaction or whether it collides directly with the alpha carbon um, to give a substitution product. And essentially this is gonna depend on the, the activation energy for each of those possible steps. Okay, so what chemists have figured out is that when the uh, electrophilic carbon is methyl or it's primary like it is right now, then there's, it's really easy. There's lots of space around that alpha carbon. And so it's really easy for the nucleophile to access that, that alpha carbon. That collision is, is simple, it's not very hindered. And so the SN2 reaction is preferred. If you look over on the, on the right-hand side, those uh, darker gray balls represent the carbon atoms. The red larger atom is the, is the bromine and the smaller white light gray uh, uh, spheres are, represent the hydrogen atoms. Okay, and we can rotate this around and look at it from different angles. We can also look at it from a space filling perspective. And that space filling perspective gives an idea of how crowded or, or, or uncrowded uh, different parts of the molecule are. So when we look at the alpha carbon, that darker gray sphere that's next to the, the bromine leaving group, there's a space on this kind of upper portion anti-periplanar to that leaving group uh, where a nucleophile could quite readily collide. So essentially comparing how easily it is, the activation energy for, for that approach, forming a new nucleophile carbon bond, breaking a single sigma bond, um, that's lower energy, that ends up being lower energy than if that species collided as a base, collided with the proton and the beta carbon, so breaking one sigma bond, forming a pi bond, then breaking, so essentially breaking two sigma bonds. All right, so when that alpha carbon is, is primary, or methyl, this, the SN2 reaction is favored. So now let's look at what happens uh, when that alpha carbon is secondary. It's bound to two things besides hydrogen atoms. And if we convert that into three dimensions, we look at it in the space filling model, rotate it around. So now the space anti-periplanar to the leaving group is getting a little bit more crowded. So there's the bromine leaving group. There's that space there, and there's all, all these different groups uh, around it now. There's still a little bit of space in there, but what chemists have, have experimentally, experimentally determined at this point is that as soon as you start to get to a, a secondary alpha carbon, there starts to be a lot more of the elimination reaction. This little tiny proton over on the side, uh, much easier uh, to access, which means a lower activation energy. So now the E2 reaction dominates over the SN2 reaction. Much easier for a base to collide with this proton that's sticking out in space, rather than having to, to access, there's a lot of repulsion there as, it, as the a nucleophile approaches that alpha carbon. What happens then if it's tertiary? Let's put another group on there. So now we've got a tertiary alpha carbon. Let's convert that to three dimensions. Okay, so there's, let's bring it over to this side. So there's the leaving group, lots of groups around that alpha carbon. We can barely even see that alpha carbon anymore. So now for a nucleophile to collide, it has to get right down the middle of a tunnel. Um, and, and so the chances, the probability of that happening from a random collision getting right in there with all that electronic repulsion around, uh, it's, it's negligible or undetectable really. Um, and then of course that gets even worse as we start to add uh, other groups on. So now as we add even more and more groups, 
there's the alpha carbon in there. And it's keep in mind that these groups aren't even static. They're rotating around in space. So they're swinging past that, that alpha carbon uh, as well. So at that point, much easier to pluck off or collide with uh, a, a little proton on a beta carbon, much lower activation energy than access to that alpha carbon. So as soon as you get to tertiary, um, certainly it's the E2 reaction that's favored uh, over an SN2 reaction. Okay, so just to review, When that alpha carbon is methyl, E2 is not even possible. There are no, there is no beta carbon, so there's no protons, and very easy to access uh, that alpha carbon. We go to secondary, excuse me, we go to primary. Still, lots of space really around that that alpha carbon. Just two little protons on on either side, really blocking blocking the way. So even then, uh, SN2 reaction is favored over E2. As soon as we get to secondary now, now it just ha it happens experimentally that the experimentally determined that the, the access to that causes a high enough activation energy that the E2 reaction is more favorable than the SN2 reaction. And then as soon as we get to a tertiary alpha carbon, that access to that alpha carbon is so hard, hard so difficult, such a high activation energy that we don't even see um, the SN2 reaction anymore and it's all E2.